clean the room. She, she also told him, listen up, Robert, this is tough, to take a bath once a week. She wanted him to bathe once a week to clean up his room and to help out with the rent. So the cops say they actually had to arrest him for wasting their time. <laughs> <laughs> Whether he needed oh. it or not, once a week. Once a week, he needed to bathe once a week. There so you take go. that under advisement. Unbelievable. All right, Ashley, you had the Daily Telegraph. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was psychologically uh, tortured a lot as a kid, too. And if my mom's watching, she's saying, yes, you were. Yeah. All right, listen, uh. this is interesting. Roy and Val, although I did, they did, well, once a, once a week's fine. What can I say? Roy and Val Worthington from Castle Donington in Leicestershire decided to renew their wedding vows. And like you do, they decided to make it a cowboy-themed affair. Why, I don't know. So they have a big party in the pub after her renewing their vows. And someone reported to the police that I thought I saw weapons in the pub. So the pub is surrounded by police and sharpshooters. They even had a helicopter hovering above. And of course, they all come falling out of the pub and they're dressed as cowboys and what have you. And the police say, oops, sorry, and left. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 ay. Tika, Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Well, you know, this is actually very good news for Ashley. I know Ashley is getting a little advanced in years, and I've got the best Christmas present ever. What? There's now a device <laughs> that tracks patients who wander. So, you know, folks that suffer from dementia and things like that, it's a personal low jack. Fox already has one of those. <laughs> Your loved ones can keep track of you. Great, great news today in the oh, journal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just don't good. see it, Tika, because it's on his ankle. That's all. That's why we don't see it. Oh, oh, man. Well, Ashley Webster. Uh, you know, Alexis, uh, A-Rod's a, a little bit uh, too obvious here, so we'll, we'll leave that to everyone's. Everyone's already read the story anyway. But interesting new Cold War developing uh, with our neighbors to the north, the Great White North even. Uh, we're talking about uh, a big takeout here. A, a year from today, the uh, Olympics are going to begin already, and they're going to be in Vancouver. They're saying it's not going to be like the U old USA, you know, Soviet Union uh, matchups and smackdowns and throwdowns and uh, hockey games and the like, but uh, definitely says you know that the tension's starting to build a little bit. Canada's decided they want to take down the U.S. and come out number one. Although we're no, not always uh, number one in the winter games. Uh, in, in fact, uh, rarely near the top. They should look to the Nordic uh, folks, I think, uh, for that. But nonetheless, uh, they're talking about how the, the pressure's heating up. So it should be interesting. And with the Canadian dollar weakening against the U.S., they may be looking to, to get some more Americans heading that way. Because uh, when, back when it was, you know, at parity, that was uh, not not the cheap vacation it used to be to go up north. Okay, so when am I taking off vacation next year? When does this occur? It's a year from today. <laughs> a year from today. Okay, a year from ready? today. Oh, actually, sorry, a year from that. a year from Thursday. So I think a year from Thursday. All right, straight, All right we right. know what Connell McShane will be doing while I'm over there. All right, guys. Right. Well, thank you very much. Me. Great, great turn the page. All right, coming up next, Fed Chief Ben Bernanke will be on Capitol Hill today, testifying about the Fed's efforts to get liquidity into the markets. Former Fed Governor Wayne Angel tells us what he thinks will make a difference in this economy. That's next on the opening bell. As the markets open, as the trades begin, as news breaks, count on us for superior coverage and analysis. For real financial news, it's Fox Business Network. Start here. Start now. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. Will you stand in line for wilting, overpriced roses? Pro Flowers has a better solution. Send her a dozen assorted roses fresh from the field right to her door for just $29.99. Or make her even happier. Send her 18 red roses plus this premium ruby red vase for only $10 more. This exclusive TV offer expires Friday, so don't wait. Go to proflowers.com, click on the microphone in the upper right corner, enter discount in the box, or call toll-free 1-800-FRESHEST and mention TV, and you're ready to send fresh roses to her for Valentine's Day. Maybe two minutes on the computer, click, 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 and you're, and you're done. So it avoids a lot of headache and a lot of hassle at the last minute. Those flowers stay fresh and beautiful a week to two weeks. Pro Flowers consistently delivers flowers that are good quality. This exclusive TV offer is $30 less than standard website pricing and expires Friday. So go now to proflowers.com, click on the microphone in the upper right corner, enter discount in the box, or call 1-800-FRESHEST and mention TV. Call or go online now. This is the AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan card. You know what's great about this card? Wherever you go nationwide, your coverage travels with you. 
And that's just one of the many reasons you need the card you can trust. Because with AARP Medicare's supplement insurance plans, you can apply year-round, talk with personal health insurance advisors, and so much more. If you're turning 65 or older, or you've already enrolled in a Medicare supplement plan, call for this free information kit in Medicare Guide. These are the only Medicare supplement insurance plans exclusively endorsed by AARP. These plans, insured by United Healthcare Insurance Company, help cover some of your medical expenses not covered by Medicare alone. This could save you thousands of dollars. Want your choice of doctors or hospitals, virtually no claim forms, and no referrals needed to see a specialist? Call for your free kit. Yep, this is one great card. We're just minutes away from the top of the hour. Let's check in with Brian Sullivan for a preview of what we can expect coming up next. Brian? Well, Alexis, you're down in D.C. You're at the scene of the action. Some would say the scene of the crime, I guess. We have a lot going on today. Let's see. Tim Geithner speaking in about an hour, trying to sell his version of the TARP. You've got the Senate voting on the stimulus. Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke speaking or testifying, if you will, before the House Financial Services Committee. We're going to be taking Geithner live. Plus, we've got the state treasurer of Pennsylvania about what they would do if they received a few billion in taxpayer money. And there's a couple of states out there, Alexis, still. And I think maybe Fox Biz should think about moving their headquarters down maybe to uh, Tennessee, no state income tax. But can it last? We're going to have an expert in Tennessee taxes to talk about that. So a lot going on. Yeah, we're going to see some hikes all across the board. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. All right, well, Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke will testify before the House Financial Services Committee today, speaking about the Fed's lending program. It has been doing everything it can at this point, every funding facility you could imagine. Joining us now is Wayne Angel, former Federal Reserve Governor and also a former Bear Stearns Chief Economist. Wayne, wonderful to see you. Thanks for being here. So the Fed Chairman will testify today. This is a little bit probably of a precursor cursor for what we can see in the semi-annual testimony coming up in a couple of weeks. What does he need to say today to demonstrate that those credit facilities are working? Well, I would like to see Fed Chairman Bernanke focus on price stability. And it seems to me that commodity prices provide an, a clue as to where the price level is going. And we have to say that the Federal Reserve injection of all these excess reserves has already stopped the deflation in commodity prices so that the expectation is no longer that commodity prices are going to be lower and lower. Uh, but we want the Fed to be even-handed. Uh, we, we also do not want the Fed to generate uh, any price increases. And so commodity prices may provide that insight for them as well. You know, Wayne, I was speaking to a former colleague, Lyle Gramley, earlier, former Fed governor, and we talked about the stimulus package. And he basically said, look, Alexis, if we don't pass a fiscal stimulus package, the consequences to the economy could be catastrophic. He actually even said to me off camera, the likelihood that President Obama could see unemployment rates back down around five, five and a half percent would only be if he won a second election. Do you view it as that dire as well? Well, I, it seems to me that the major factor that is going to get this economy going is monetary policy. And monetary policy has already made a significant step in the right direction. So I, I, I believe that that's a lot more important than the fiscal stimulus program. But the fiscal stimulus program adds a kind of insurance uh, to what the Fed has already done. So I'm somewhat optimistic that we are going to see uh, the, the, the economy begin to improve as we close in on the end of 2009. So it's fair to say, though, Wayne, that the fact of the matter is no one instrument will turn this economy around. It's a combination of monetary policy. It's a combination of capital injections, a combination of a stimulus package, that all these things are interconnected. Because at least thus far, in terms of cutting interest rates, it hasn't had material consequences. What has had material consequences on credit markets is some of the funding facilities that the Federal Reserve Chairman has put in place. Well, those funding facilities have had the Fed's balance sheet expand, and that has pumped excess reserves into the banking system, 
and we know with ex those excess reserves there and the current interest rate structure, we, we know there's going to be uh, profitability for banks in making new loans. So uh, we're already, it seems to me, uh, getting things corrected in regard to direction of, of lending activity. Wayne, how ugly is this? Well, it's not very comfortable uh, to see employment uh, uh, decline as rapidly as we've seen uh, over the last uh, 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 over the last year. So uh, it will be much better when we see uh, firms expecting uh, not price decreases, but price increases uh, to be a possibility for them. So uh, the, the economy is going to respond uh, as we get past this deflation risk period uh, that we've been in. What will the signs be that I need to look out for that suggest that we are getting that second half recovery? And if I don't see them, or if we don't see them, how big might the consequences be? Well, the, 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 the signs are very clear. And I would call these signs stabilization of commodity prices. And that means that oil stays in the 35 to $45 range, and it doesn't go to $5 or $15. So we, we don't want a continued indication of deflation because deflation causes everyone to want to pull in the stops and, and, and to decrease their investment activity. What I would like to see is I would like to see the, uh, the, 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 the Treasury uh, join forces with what the Fed has done and, and, and to make investments on the basis of making a profit. So it looks to me like the profit opportunities for the U.S. Treasury are getting very, very promising. Interesting. So you think some of the programs that will be announced today, unlike what we've seen in the Con Congressional Budget Office survey, that we've got some opportunity to make some money and perhaps we should stop worrying about the trillion dollar figures and think about the return on equity? Well, Alexis, if you can't make money as an investor at this point in the cycle, then you're never going to make money because it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to buy uh, shares of companies and, and put preferred stock in those companies at a time where prospects for a turnaround are as good as they are. And when you look out a year or two years, uh, many of these stocks uh, and preferred stocks that the uh, uh, Treasury should be investing in uh, could be uh, much more valuable then than now. And so it, it's a question then of paying the taxpayer back by having uh, a, a rise in value. All right. Well, Wayne, I'm going to think about what I want when that money comes back, whether it's going to be a Big Mac at McDonald's or something a lot better in my tax check. But Wayne Angel, as always, wonderful seeing you. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with the opening bell in just a moment. Tonight, huge profits or just a pain in the assets? That's the question. So what's the answer when it comes to the private partnership plan and buying toxic assets? We break it all down. The first and last name in business, Cavuto. You wanted more business news. You wanted more information. We needed more TV. Fox Business Network, available in HD. Until we can move a ton of goods using no fuel, we've got the next best thing. CSX trains can move a ton of goods 400...